lounge with Travify Academy, where we get to hear from travel industry voices and experts to learn more about their story and also what they see on the horizon for travel professionals. And I'm Stephanie Grice, and our guest today is Penny Cooper and Christina Vieira, who are both owners of their own agencies, but have also co-created Magic Made Simple. So welcome to the lounge, Penny and Christina. So excited to have you here, and thanks for joining us. Thanks. We're excited to be here. Yeah, it's a wonderful day. <laughs> I know. I know. It's so, so exciting. And I'm really excited to chat with you both today just on talking about one of the biggest topics of all is just like, how do I get new leads and prospects and not to mention the right ones? So we'll be covering all of that too, which I'm super excited to, to dig into. Um, But before we dive into that, can you both just share how did you find yourselves in the travel industry? And also how is Magic Made Simple born? And, and also if you can explain what you do at Magic Made Simple. Perfect. Um, I'll I'll let Penny go first because she's been in the industry a little bit longer than I have, and then I'll <laughs> I'll talk about how I I got here. Yeah, yeah. So actually, travel is my second career. I came from a Fortune 100 company. I was in corporate management um, for almost 20 years, and when life changes happened, I decided I wanted to do something really fun. And so travel made the top list and, you know, was where I landed. Um, and I started with a great agency and then opened my own agency in 2017. And so now I have Embrace the Magic Travel, which is family focused Disney forward travel agency. And um, Christine and I also share C Pinnacle Travel, which is a luxury brand travel agency. So, yeah. So I came from, I um, was working in marketing at a tech startup um, and our tech startup went public. And so we had multiple CEOs over four years and one was like, hey, you should also be in charge of sales training. And I'm like, I have never sold anything in my life, but sure, why not? Um, and then it was, oh, you should be in charge of planning all of the travel for the sales team. And so I ended up doing that um, and you know, just naturally started getting people asking about their personal trips because I was so good at planning their corporate travel. And I was doing that in my free time. And my husband looked at me and said, there's got to be a way you can get paid to do this because you love it. And I was like, no, let's look into it. I'll do that. That sounds good. Um, and so that's how I ended up, you know, starting. I, I started with an agency as well. And I started Showcase the World to Travel in um, September 2019. So. Oh, um, right before everything got crazy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Perfect timing. Um, but it was perfect timing because um, it was during that difficult COVID time where I joined an accountability group that Penny happened to be in. And so that's how we kind of got connected. And people were kind of asking us how, you know, we weren't as busy as other people seemed to be. And we looked at it and we were like, oh, it's because we have our businesses automated. Everything's automated. We are sending out automated emails. All of the busy work is done behind the scenes. So um, when we would when we'd look into it, because we were like, everyone seems busy. Why are we not so busy? Is there something wrong? And we found out that it was the systems we had in place. And once we kind of, you know, diagnosed that, we had friends and colleagues coming to us asking how we they could do it too. And so that's how Magic Made Simple was born is, you know, just a lot of love and support from our fellow advisors and owners in the industry asking us for for help. And so we um, started Magic Made Simple as an email template. We started with one email template. Um, and now we have over 100 products. We have a group coaching program and a bunch of um, masterminds as well. So we definitely uh, have have grown with, with the need that people were coming to us with. So we're, that's how Magic Made Simple was born. Yeah, it's really fun to give back to the industry, right? So when, when it's something you love and you can just figure out a way that you can also give back and share with your fellow travel advisors. So that's what we love to do. That's so cool. And that's why, that's what, thank you for sharing your expertise with us. And I know, and Penny, we've had you on a webinar, I think it was in 2020, maybe around that time. Oh. We're just talking about email marketing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So say very similar topic and it's just really cool. I love in the industry how that's what's great about this industry is so many people are willing to help each other grow and, and succeed because when everyone succeeds, we all succeed. And so it's really cool. So I love that. And Thanks again for joining us here today. I'm excited. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I remember back at that podcast, that was a lot of fun. And we were talking about the whole email automation sequence. So we're going to touch a little bit today about the very beginning of that sequence attraction, but really how you attract your prospects and leads and then move on to building a relationship with them. That whole quote call, like the nitty gritty where you actually close the sale and then you have to care for the client and then moving on when they return, going through loyalty. And then how do you start it back up all over again? So, yeah. Yeah, it's a whole process. And to automate it, it's just beautiful. Oh my gosh. So mm-hmm. it's so cool. Well, <laughs> let, let's get into it. Because now oh, it's good. This, I'm just so intrigued. I mean, the whole timeline of this. But talking, starting from the very, very beginning, um, you know, finding those new leads and those new prospects. But I do know that there are kind of two different types of people that are going to be looking for new prospects and leads or two types of advisors. So can one of you just share what those are? So it sets us, sets the tone for when we dive further into here. Yeah. So usually you have, we find uh, there's two types of uh, travel advisors. There's usually a, a, when someone says, how do you get new clients? An experienced advisor will come on and say, oh, my referrals, my return clients, and then they they offer me referrals. And so that's the majority of my bu- business is referral business. And that's all well and fine. And we love that. But if you're a brand new agent, where do you get those referrals? How does it start, you know, to begin with? So we know that there, there needs to be a way that you attract people. And so that's why we call it attraction made simple, because it's, you know, it's a process of um, offering something We call it a freebie or a lead magnet or an irresistible free offer, offering something in exchange for an email address. And so you pull people into your world, into your travel world, and then you start building a relationship with them. So Christina, you were talking, we were talking before the podcast about um, also like if you're an experienced agent, how you can convert um, to like a new business model or. So both Penny and I have built our businesses um, with the idea of a lead magnet and, you know, paying to play and building funnels. And I know that's not how, that's not comfortable for everyone, but you need some way to take people off of whatever platform you're on. So whether you're using organic social media, you're using vendor events or what, whatever way you are getting your name out there, whichever your, what your brilliance is, you need a way to follow up. And it's that follow up where a lot of people fall down because they just don't know how to do it. And so that's why we love um, the the attraction series, because it follows up with either a lead magnet, an event you've attended or a DM you've received. You're adding someone to your email list and that's when they are primed to open. So you want to be maximizing. You don't want to be just send them to a weekly newsletter that you may or may not send weekly. I know I'm not great about sending mine weekly either. I I do email marketing, right? Having something that is evergreen and introduces yourself, but also recognizes the person you're talking to. So a lot of the things that we do go through this series of recognizing who you're talking to, making a recommendation based on that person, then giving something to make them relate to you. What is something that you can share that they can see you as their guide? And then you make the request, right? So a lot of travel advisors either lean really into recommendation or request, and they don't remember to recognize and relate. And so, you know, having something that follows up in a strategic way that goes through all of those things that a buyer needs is really going to help you maximize that email address. Whether you spent your time organically marketing on social media, you spent your money at a vendor event or a Facebook ad, how do you really maximize that ROI in that follow-up sequence? You know, there's new, um, they used to say you needed to touch base with a prospect or a lead seven to 12 times. Like you needed to just have some kind of touch base, whether that's social media or email or in person. The new industry standard is 16 to 20. Because wow. I, because we are so, and if you think about it, it makes sense. Just think about how inundated we are every day with all types of digital media, whether again, email, social media, videos, reels. So people are uh, consuming content like crazy. And so in order to be a splash, in order to get noticed, you have to put yourself in front of people. And one of the best ways to do that is number one, find the right person to put yourself in front of, find your ideal client that you want to attract and work with. 
um, because we found that that's like the secret sauce of, <laughs> of attraction is actually figuring out the right person to attract. And then number two, making sure that you, you're putting yourself out there. So when people say, how many times should I follow up? The answer is not a number. Then the answer is continually until they tell you stop following up with me. <laughs> so that's so true. No, it's really true. And, and I think that's the thing too, is a lot of people are just nervous about I mean, I would be too, honestly. I totally get it when I hear advisors say like, oh, I just like, I don't, I don't want them to get to the point where they say unsubscribe me, you know, or, you know, and it's, I don't want to bother them or I don't want to inundate their email box or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I know. One One of my mentors says, if they're not asking you to send less emails, you're not sending enough. Right. And that hit me. That hit me. Um, I don't like to go that far, but you have to think about how you use your inbox, right? How many times do you, you just archive something that you see there, but when you're really ready to open it, you know that it's there. So I get hundreds of emails from, you know, marketers, <laughs> right? Um, you know, if you're you're following the Amy Porter fields, the Jenna Kutchers, the big names in digital marketing, they're sending emails daily. I'm not going to unsubscribe because they send me really good stuff but I'm not going to sit and open and read every single one. I'm going to open and read the ones that I feel like apply to me. And I'm going to open and read them when I'm ready for them. And so um, Penny has a really good analogy about a shoe store. So a shoe store or yeah. just like on main yeah. street. Yeah. 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 Well, again, from another mentor that we both had was, you know, traditionally in the past, your travel agencies were brick and mortar and they were on main street. Right. And so you go to do your grocery shopping, you go to pick up your dry cleaning or whatever, and you see the travel agency and you always know it's there and it's available for when you're ready to book your trip. You don't always go inside of it, right? Every time you take a trip to town, but when you need it, you know that it's there. Well, when you're online, you're only online presence, then you have to figure out a way to be in front of people and remind them that you're there. So a weekly email to their inbox is a way to just show up and say, Hey, I'm still here. Right. It's not burdensome. It's just, it's actually doing your job to remind people that you exist and it gives them a really great way to get in touch with you quickly so that they don't have to try to remember the name Penny Cooper. They don't have to try to remember the name, embrace the magic travel. They just know that at one point they were attracted to me because of some great content I offered them or that they saw me somewhere and they're like, Hey, I want to, I want to be in her world for a little bit. And then I keep showing up for them. And that also shows reliability because I keep showing up for them and I'm there consistently and they don't have to wonder about it because there I am. And regardless if they reply to that last email I sent or if they scour their inbox and find one from months ago, it's okay because it all comes back to me, you know, and, and lands inside of my inbox. And you'd be amazed at the stories. I mean, Christine and I both have these results where We've had people on our list for three years before they booked a fantastic trip with us, but it took that. I mean, I have a couple of stories where one was from a Facebook group that I had. Um, it was a couple of years before he booked. And then um, one was from an event, an in-person event. It took her three years before she booked with me. But, you know, and, and we know that because we can track how did they get on our list, right? So we have them dedicated by list. And what kind of content were we sending them? What were they originally interested in? And, you know, how can we serve them now? So, but all of that, there's no way I could keep up with that manually. So that's my automation. And like having a really awesome email automation tool is like your best friend when it comes to this. Um, One of our, one of my favorite sayings is there's, there aren't silver bullets, right? We're all looking for the silver bullet to really drive our business. There aren't silver bullets, but there's lots of gold nuggets. And so if you can find the right gold nuggets to, and you find the gold man, gold mine, then you can amass, you know, some great wealth in your business because you're choosing the right things. And again, we just go back to it's ideal client. It's, you know, meeting them where they are. So as soon as you offer them something in exchange for that email that you follow up, And we, our prescription for that is daily for a week. And then you go into a weekly cadence of follow-up. And 
you know, that doesn't necessarily mean newsletter. It We would suggest that means more relationship type building emails um, and getting to know them type emails. Um, and then also, you know, showing up in a variety of different places like your social media and, but always understand what each component is doing for you and how it's driving your business. So if you get leads from social media, that's great. I mean, we have some friends that TikTok is their jam and like, they get leads. They get tons of leads. I'm not sure how many bookings they get, but they get tons of leads from it, right? And so eventually those turn, some turn into bookings. What you want to do, what I try to do in my business is balance. I want the leads coming in or the leads that I actually want to book and not have as much fluff to kind of go through. Um, but that's just my business. You know, that's my business model and what I'm looking for. And so that's why I prescribe to the lead magnet aspect mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Love the lead bank side. And one one question too, because uh, I know a lot of listeners are probably wondering this is what tools do you currently use or what what have you seen? What do you use? And then are there any other tools out there that um, ad other advisors use that that you like? Yeah. I'll let Christine talk about specifically the love, the tool that we absolutely love and why. But I want to start with you. Can, I, I call it shoestrings and bubblegum. You can completely automate your system with shoestrings and bubblegum. <laughs> you do not have to spend a whole lot of money to start. I just want to put that out there because um, there are tools that will do a lot. And we do we now do have a bells and whistle kind of tool um, that we've both had for years and years. I've had mine since 2016. And we wouldn't trade it for the world, even though they just doubled their prices, but <laughs> yeah, but they were due. Um, but there's there's a way to get into it. And so you just tiptoe into it and then you build the tool set, you build your tech stack to match where you are. Because no matter, no matter if it's choosing the what kind of view you choose in a resort hotel room or what kind of tech you use, you're, it's either time or money. So one is you have to spend more time, but you don't spend as much money for it. One is you invest the money, but it, and it saves you a whole lot of time when you're building it out. But when you're a new, when you're a new agent, that's what you've got is time. So you have the opportunity to build it out a little bit at a time. So. So what I say is the best tool is the one that you feel most comfortable with the interface and the one that you're going to use, right? Um, when we're talking about attraction, there are some great travel CRMs out there that have some email automation capabilities. They are not email automation tools. And so they're great for client care. But if you're looking for that marketing capabilities, you really do need to look into an autoresponder. An autoresponder is something like a MailChimp, a MailerLite. We love ActiveCampaign. And the reason we love ActiveCampaign is because we can segment audiences and we can, you know, create conditional formatting. Conditional formatting is where I can say, all right, this person has the tag that they have young children. So I'm going to send them this specific paragraph about traveling with infants. Or, you know, you can really personalize the automated content. And that's a big thing that we hear a lot is, well, I don't want to automate because I don't want to lose the personalization. But when you automate, you free yourself up to be able to do more personalized tasks like phone calls and things like that. So if you can automate in a way that still personalizes, that's, you know, a, a huge ROI. And that's why we love Active Campaign because you have those capabilities. You also are able to do um, guided choices. I don't know if that's what they call it or if that's just what we call it. Um, but, you know, you you hear back and you can create content based on people's responses. So you're putting in choices into an email. Where are you in the planning process? I'm ready to book. I just want ideas. I've already booked, but I'm just like following you. So you know that that's not a good lead, right? And they can click that and they can be brought down different paths based on what their responses are. So you're giving them the content that they want. So when they're inundated with all of this content, because you're talking to them, you're talking to one ideal client. We've mentioned ideal client a few times now, but the more you can tailor your messaging to the person you want to book, we get a lot of pushback on that. Um, the person you want to book is not necessarily, doesn't mean you're not going to book other people. You can still book other people, but who's the person you want to attract? That's who you should be talking to. And then the more you can use their words in that lead magnet, in that attraction sequence, the more you can answer your que their questions in that relationship building sequence, the easier it's going to be to close that set. 
Yes, that's so important. Yeah, because we keep seeing like the ideal clients. And I know um, before this, Christina, you had said um, something like, you know, there's when you're attracting people, sometimes there's that resistance to an ideal client. So how do you make sure that you're finding that ideal client as all of this is happening? Well, I think one of the ways to think about it is that your ideal client today is not necessarily going to be your ideal client in a few months. So you're not stuck with this is my ideal client forever and ever and ever. It can evolve and it will evolve. So if you're just starting out, you don't have as much clarity into who you like to book and who you don't like to book, right? So it's harder at first to come up with your ideal client. But as you have more and more clients, you can see, okay, I loved working with them because of this. And I loved working with them because of that. And I think a lot of people um, really focus on what are the demographics of an ideal client? Like, give me your demographics and then we'll come up with a marketing plan. I don't think it's necessarily about demographics. It's about a problem you solve. Because if you can address the problem that you solve, and Penny and I both have family-focused agencies. They started as very Disney heavy, but we have very different problems that we solve. And so if I have a client come in who's looking for, you know, a a memorable, magical, multi-generational trip, then I might send them over to Penny because I know that that's her ideal client. Whereas my ideal client is an overwhelmed working mom who just doesn't have time to sort through everything and plan. And the more you can address those problems in your content, the more you can talk to your eyes. So my my website is very much, hey, mom, I see you. You're, you're scrolling on your phone because you're at soccer practice right now. The more they're going to know that I, they're in the right place, right? So just because I'm talking to that busy mom doesn't mean I'm not going to book grandpa if he comes to me and I feel like he's an ideal client. But it means that a busy mom who's searching for something and finds me knows that she's in the right place. And she knows that I understand her. And she knows that I'm talking about the fact that, you know, she hasn't had a vacation. When's the last time she enjoyed vacation? And she resonates with that and relates to it. And that's the type of content she wants to see. And so that's what it's about. It's about marketing, making your message talk to one person so they feel seen. It's not about... It's a little bit about filtering out everyone you don't want, but it's not about necessarily this is the only person you can book. And I think that that's really important when we're having this ideal client conversation, that it doesn't mean you can't do other things. It just means this is the person you're trying to attract. That's who you want to talk to. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. And is there kind of an exercise that someone can do to find that ideal client? Because I would imagine, you know, when you're starting out, you're like, well, I would take it, you know, luxury cruising, all these. So how do you start to whittle it down? Like, Is there an exercise that you've you've done or seen people do at all? Well, I like to get people to really focus on their why, right? Hmm. So taking the ideal client out of it and really focusing on why are you doing this? Um, Simon Sinek has a great TED talk. He has a book too, but the book's really fluff. You you can watch the 15 minute TED talk. Um, And he has an exercise where you ask why five times. So once you get down to your why and you go really, really deep, that's when you can find people who need your why. Hmm. I like that. That's cool. So it's more about you than Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of mindset, right? There's a little bit of mindset that says I am willing to um, really hone in and focus on a select group, which you're also saying I'm also willing to not focus on some groups, right? So you have to have a mindset that you're okay with that. And it's very similar to the mindset of, well, what if people unsubscribe from my emails? Well, that's okay. They're actually doing you a favor and they're doing themselves a favor if they unsubscribe. And as soon as you can turn from, oh my goodness, someone unsubscribed from my email to thank goodness they unsubscribed from my email, (laughs) you realize that you are, you know, then you're with your people, right? Because you want to talk with your people. You don't want to land in someone's inbox that doesn't need you or want you there, right? So it's actually a good thing when they're communicating with you like that. Um, but it does, it definitely takes a little bit of, you know, um, self-talk. That's why you've heard us say accountability group and our mastermind and our mentors, because we believe that that's a big part of it too. Like find a really great coaching program that's going to help you through some of these 
mindset things and um, also accountability groups so that you can bounce ideas off of fellow agents. Um, because when you're in it with your peers, when there's a collaboration opportunity, you'll, you'll lift each other up and you'll go so much further and, you know, you can figure out what the nuances are and you can do exactly the same thing and have different results, but then, then figure it out together so that you can both have great results with it. So. Mm -hmm. That's why, again, just love the industry, just the collaboration. Mm -hmm. And I, I really feel like um, I, before there obviously was too, but during the pandemic time, I saw so much of that. And I think it's only continuing like exactly what you're talking about. And in Magic Made Simple came out of the pandemic pretty much too, didn't it? Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. That accountability group where mm -hmm. we were just talking about things we were doing and our friends were like, really? Oh, you're doing that. How do you do that? And oh, then then would you share that with us? And so, yeah, that's exactly where that came from. And it started with, you know, one destination, one set of emails that we had honed to perfection and then moved on from there. So it's multiple, you know, luxury crews, like you said, no matter what, um, you know, what your niche is, then you have an opportunity to really um, attract, you know, care and care for and build that loyalty with that client base. Yeah, absolutely. And I know one of the big things of that. So getting into this topic is lead magnets, um, yeah. which I just I love that word. It's just such a great <laughs> term. And I love it because it's so they are so fun. I've seen really cool lead magnets, but I'm assuming I don't want to get ahead of the conversation, but that your lead magnet magnets also going to help attract your ideal clients as well. Um, so see, I I'm already learning something from you. From you um, yeah. So can you share, how, do, how does that work? Like, what are examples of lead magnets? Well, let me give you an example of two bad ones first. Oh, perfect. The first one that I ever created was a 24-page WDW planning guide. I knew what WDW meant because I was, you know, focusing on Disney and I knew that was Walt Disney World. But does that does my ideal client know that what that that's what that means? Um, does my ideal client want to go through 24 pages of planning materials? No. So um I took that, you know, started asking my to people on my discovery calls, what do you what do you struggle with most when it comes to planning a Disney vacation? And they'd say overwhelm because that's who I was attracting, right? And so I changed my lead magnet to five easy steps to a Disney vacation without overwhelm. And it blew up because I was using their words and I was talking directly to them. It was making it simple. So a good lead magnet is quick. It addresses one problem. So it should be a problem. You provide the solution, but then you introduce the next problem, which gets them reading your emails right? Um, and it should meet them where they are. And that's a big one that I think people miss because the most common lead magnet I see for travel advisors is a packing list. But if you're meeting your client where they are, you're answering the questions they have before they book, not when they're ready to go. Most likely they're looking for a packing list as they're, you know, a month or two before their trip. They're not looking for it before they book. And so you're not maximizing that lead because they've already booked their trip and they they either used another travel advisor, they did it on their own. They might not want to use a travel advisor ever. They just want your packing list. So when you're creating a lead magnet, you need to think about who is my ideal client? What is the problem that they have before they start planning their trip? How can I address that quickly? And how do I present to the next problem so that they're going to read that series of emails that follows up? So short, sweet, to the point, answers a quick problem and is easily delivered. And I guarantee, guarantee everybody listening to this call, if you have any amount of content at all, if you've ever written an email to a client, if you've ever written a blog post, if you've ever done research on a product or a destination that you like to, to sell, you have a lead magnet in your arsenal already. It's not hard. We try to <laughs> we try to make it so hard. It is not hard, right? You just have to think about it a little differently. But yes. I know you have it already. 
sometimes you're too close to it that you need that kind of mentorship or accountability group to kind of help you see what you're missing. Um, and so that's why we, we we love some of our programs is because we can help people see what's right in front of them. Um, but there's so many ideas. It doesn't have to be a PDF. It doesn't have to be a traditional, whatever you think a lead magnet is. It could be a video. It could be something really, really cool, be access to something. And so that's why... Um, for the people listening to this podcast, we have created a resource. It's a lead magnet content and delivery ideas for your travel business. And I know we, Stephanie, we spoke before and she's going to put that in the show notes, show notes for you. Um, but if you're listening, it is magicmadesimple.net slash travify dash academy dash podcast. And that's where you'll get that free download. I love that. That's so cool. I can't wait to check it out too. Cause I love all those ideas. And, um, I like, um, uh, you, you were saying earlier, like it's a lead lead magnet magnet is basically what it is. <laughs> it's uh, just magnets on magnets. It's really yeah. cool. But I think that's, that's interesting because I'm not going to lie. I honestly automatically think of a PDF download, like, and so you're right. It could be a video, you know, that you do just a uh, loom video, you know, that you just walk through or, you know, um, it's so cool. I know that there'll be some of them in, so I don't want to uh, spoil what will be in the free download. But what are other examples like of besides if it's not a PDF? Well, I think there's a lot of different kinds of PDFs that you could send. It doesn't have to be a list of steps. It doesn't have to be a packing list. It doesn't have to be. You can get really, really creative with it. I know a lot of people who use Travify itineraries yes. as lead magnets. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a great one if you have people, you know, getting them to think about the experiences they could have only if they book with you, you know, putting that together in, in an itinerary there. Um, oh my goodness, I'm like completely blank, blanking beyond, you know, it could be an ebook. It could be, you know, any, if the, I know a lot of people who do, if they have um, a book, the first chapter as a lead magnet, mm-hmm. um, you could do. If you blog, so like if you have a blog, if you keep up with on your website, you could do a curated list of, you know, blogs that go together. And so this is a really great place to say, but Penny, they can go to my blog and find that. Yes, they could. But if you're attracting them (laughs) by intentionally putting this in front of you, the value is you've curated this list for them that gives them exactly what they want when they need it. They don't have to go and hunt and peck and search on your blog and they may never find your website. So if you're doing a pay to play, like through advertising or something, then, you know, now you've, you've gain their attention and putting it in front of them, then you can direct them to your website and you can gain their, because remember 16 to 20 online digital points, you have to, you have to hit that while you're bringing people into your atmosphere. So, yeah. It is a lot, but it's not shocking at all when you think about it. Cause I go, we have so much that's being brought to us and, and, and it's right. I think it's really important going back to kind of the beginning of what you're talking about is a lot of times people are afraid to bother people. But when you think about, just think about yourself. Cause like when you're looking at emails, you know, you get the department stores or something, you're like, Oh my gosh, but I still never unsubscribe. I just don't look at it. Like I'm just, I know when I want to look at it, when something catches my eye and it's not like, Oh, I can't believe they did that. It's, it, there's no harm in it. It's just, you just know that's how it works. So well, I think we're conditioned for that now too. I yeah. mean, listen, if I'm looking for a pair of red boots, all I do is pick up my phone and say red boots. And I know the next time I go to one of my social media platforms, I'm going to start seeing some shoe advertisements. <laughs> I don't exactly know how all that happens, but I think that that's one of the things it's like there, we are looking for some instant gratification. And so when we can become that instant gratification, when we can put out there that, Hey, you know, we're not just influencers. We, yes, we post about our travels and our trips and everything, but not only do we, um, share what fun and what travel looks like, but we also have some great information to share with you about how to book your trip that, that, you know, that's what we do. That's what a travel advisor does is it helps the the clients along the way. And so to become a client, we've got to attract them and bring them into our world. And I think that's a bit, we talked a little bit of a mindset, but that's one of the big mindset things, especially when I'm bringing agents onto my team that we, you know, we, we do a whole m- module in, in my training program about how do you kind of shift that sales mindset to not be, I need to get the lead. I need to get the sale. I need to, it's, you need to show up because you're solving a problem. 
And if you can really connect with that ideal client and that problem, if you're not showing up for them, if you're not sending an email, if you're not being visible, you're doing them a disservice because they're going to go book their trip and it's going to be, it's not going to be the experience. Maybe it's good. Maybe they book through Expedia and then they get to the hotel and their reservation isn't even there and they have a miserable time. And that happens because you didn't send them that email that told them what you could do and what your service was. And so if you're not showing up, that's more of a bother than you sending too many emails. Yeah. And yeah, when you can clearly wrap your head around, it's my job to send the email, it's their job to open it. You release any kind of, you know, expectation. That's a really good point. It is so true. Yeah. Changing the mindset because it is, we are so conditioned and because we all are consumers ourselves. So it's, yeah, it's so true. Oh, I love all this. Oh, it's just so exciting. I'm not even an advisor. Now I want to <laughs> help make some lead magnets. It's such an exciting thing. And, and I know too, that um, I'll, I'll put your contact information in the, um, and magic made simple and link back uh, in the show notes as well, because I know there's so much to it. Also just getting your system set up. Like I know I love the shoestring and gum theory. That is perfect analogy. Um, Cause sometimes, cause I know a lot of times people are like, well, how does that work? But most of the time, you know, like your MailChimp or constant contact, they all kind of work together. And then the other thing is keeping them organized, which you touched on uh, keeping those contacts. And so it's kind of fun, but it just takes a little work to get it set up, you know? And do you tweak things ever too? Like, do you ever spend time like once a year going back and retweaking? Yeah, yeah exactly. Once nodding. a year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Every yes. quarter, there's like a focus, right? So we have all these different automations as we go through the sales cycle. So traditionally, we try to pick a quarter and we focus on, okay, let's let's improve this lead magnet and level up, right? So you start with a basic. And then, and here's the other thing is that it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has yes. to be done, right? It just has to be done. And the, so you just booked a client that you didn't send them an email. You booked the next client. You do send an email. You book the next client. You send an even better email. But the point is, is you can continually improve. And yeah. n- none of those clients are going to be able to compare with each other. So it's okay if it's not even, if it's not fair. It's just progress. That's all it is. Well, and, and so in all of our email templates, we include prompts to connect to your ideal client, but we also include prompts to level up. And what we recommend there is like you create, okay, here's what I want to do now. Here's what I want to do next. So you have these ideas of where you want this you know, workflow to go, but you give yourself permission. This is what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to put that off until the next time I update it. And like Penny said, we we each, you know, one quarter we focus on attraction, one quarter we focus on client care and up-leveling that sequence. And then we get to to loyalty, which I know is a, a good transition point. Yes. Yeah. The loyal, I was just going to say, so all the timeline of all the things you need to do, but loyalty. So we started here. And um, so as we're recording this, it's next week, but it'll be probably like within the, within the week uh, when this, when this is published, but I am actually going to join Penny and Christina again for a sales workshop. And we're going to focus on the opposite end of how do you keep the loyalty of the client? So I'm super excited because can you just share a little bit about like what, what that's all about? Just yeah, a quick so little blurb. What we are both guilty of doing, and we see a lot of our our colleagues who are still guilty of it is sending that email to your client when they come home. Like it's the last email you're ever going to send. It has five calls to action in it, right? Five purposes. It's welcome home. It's how was your trip? Will you give me a testimonial? Um, Will you send me a referral? And where do you want to go next? That's all in one email. And they're usually sending it right as soon as someone's coming home when they're overwhelmed by their inbox and their full suitcase and their empty fridge, right? So it's not meeting your ideal client where they are. And so what we're going to be talking about is how you can create a follow-up sequence that lasts three to six months that is giving them value in terms of, you know, how do you ease back into your day-to-day? How do you get the feeling of 
of where you were on your trip? Or how do you like, re- let's send a recipe from the destination you went to. So you're adding that value, you're building that relationship and you're showing up continually, but you're not showing up with, here's a supplier sale. Here's a, here's a destination. Here's a, cause they're not ready for that, right? They need to ease back in. And so this will put referral seeds in place for them and have them thinking about you, but without bombarding them. And so I'm super excited to, to get into that next week. I know. I can't wait. I'm so excited because we talk a lot of times, you know, getting the leads, but never talking about, we don't really ever focus on how do you keep these people and keep them coming back. And I'm super excited. And in the show notes, I'll put the registration, um, but it will be on October. Here, I'm just looking at my calendar so I don't say the wrong one. It is um, October 11th. Um, and it'll be at uh, 11 a.m. Eastern time. And so if you're listening to this after that date, I'll put the recording in there. So regardless, you're either going to get pumped and ready or you can go listen to it right after this. So I'm I am super, super excited about that. And I just want to thank you so much again. And thank you for the free download. Um, that will also be in here as well. And looking forward to chatting more on the other side of the, the sales flow timeline uh, with you next week. But thanks again to everyone for tuning into this episode of the Lounge of Travify and of course to our special guests Penny and Christina for joining us today and be sure to subscribe to our podcast or subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of the latest episodes and we hope you enjoyed our conversation today and join us again but for now stay safe and we'll catch you on the next flight.